Good morning, good morning, good morning. Another video. Now there's been a few questions about what happened in my golf lesson. And rather than record my golf lesson, I'll show you what happened in my golf lesson here in the conservatory. It's nice and warm. Now there's been a few guesses. So I wonder how many of you got it right and how many of you got it wrong. Because it's very difficult to see what I'm doing because I'm normally playing golf with the camera behind me so you, you're only seeing one side of my golf swing. You don't get to see it from head on, do you? So a short list of things that I need to do. So the first thing was is I'm swaying away from the golf ball. When you sway away from the golf ball your weight which should normally remain inside your footprint, is going outside your footprint. And of course, if you sway away more than you sway back, then the bottom of the arc changes, doesn't it? So when you sway away, the bottom of the arc is going with you. So then you get your fats, you get your thins, you get your tops. So the answer to this is quite simply, is I've got to turn within my footprint and not go outside my footprint. Now one of the ways I do this is this right knee, I kick it in. I kick it in towards the target a little bit and that helps keep this stable so that I can turn. I can turn, I can turn these hips and the weight stays within my footprint instead of going out here. Now, Sevi Balaceros always said that when you make your turn, your weight is in your hip pocket. So if you'll excuse my back, so when I turn, the weight is here. It hasn't. So that's number one, is to actually turn instead of doing the old sway. Number two is I've got to stand a lot closer to the ball. So I am very much, you know, I've been sat in a, in a chair, in an office chair all winter, banging a keyboard. My posture is very slouched and I'm kind of reaching for the golf ball. So um, I've got to improve my posture and stand close to the ball. So it's a question of sticking this end out, bending here, keeping my back as straight as possible for a guy my age and then the hands come in here and I stand very very close to the golf ball. Now that I am finding incredibly difficult to do. And the next part of the equation is I'm, I've always been very much hands central. Well we're sort of like seven iron down, I really want to be closing that club face down improving the loft if you like. So somehow I've got to fit all of this together into a golf swing and of course there's going to be some pretty big mistakes. So every now and then I'm hitting my driver 30 yards right of target with a slice making it 50 yards right of target. So there's something going wrong in the sequencing where I'm leaving this club face, pushing out there to the right, and it's open to the path. So, my next lesson is next Saturday. I think at the beginning, because there's so many big changes to do, then we're going to cram two or three lessons in very close together. And I'm basically, after each lesson, it's practice, play, Think about it, practice, play, think about it, that sort of thing. <coughs> now the next video you are going to see is my last round of golf before my first lesson. So you're not going to see any improvement straight away. You'll hopefully see improvement after the next video which I still haven't done Shot Tracer on because I've been watching the Masters, haven't we all? Now, there's something very important about golf lessons. 
You, know, you go to the range and two bays away over there, there's a guy getting a lesson. And you start earwigging. You start listening to what the pro is telling the person getting the lesson and you think, I'll try a bit of that. What you don't realise is you've got a slice, the guy who's been taught has got a hook. So the pro's trying to cure a hook and you've got a slice. So you don't really want to be listening. Now, what I would say about what I've got to do is some of this could actually be useful to you. If you've like me, you've got into this horrible slouch pot posture, then perhaps you want to stick your bum out and straighten your back. If you recognise you've got the sway, then perhaps you can put that, what I call that um, elastoplast, that, that one aspirin on this right knee and just, just kick it in a bit and think about keeping it where it is and turning. So these are the things I've got to do. Now what usually happens after a lesson is some things will get worse before they get better. You know, you will be stuck between, here's the new way, here's the old way, you're in the middle, you can do neither one. And it's usually at this point where, and we've all got a friend like it, haven't we? It's usually at this point where somebody says, well, I've had a, one lesson with the pro, I didn't practice, I went straight to the tee, I couldn't hit the ball, the pro is an idiot. How many people do you know like that? I mean, I could list you five off the top of my head without even thinking about it. Guys who've gone and had one lesson, never practiced, never gave it a chance to sink in and work its way in, and then blame the pro. We all know them, don't we? So if you're going to start lessons this spring, now that it is finally arrived, then you have to be aware. Lesson, practice, play, think about it, practice, play. If you go lesson, play, 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 then you're going to become yet another guy who says, God, that damn pro, he's a bloody idiot. So let's say, the next video is um, my last round before the lesson, and then after that, it's my round after the lesson. So we'll see how it goes. And uh, this, well, because I'm struggling to lose weight, I thought I'd take a couple of pounds off. Now, here's some news. Um, I'm going to have a golf day at West Monmouthshire on probably fri the first Friday in July, which I think is the 6th or the 7th of July. First Friday in July. It's going to be a society day type of package you know, bacon roll, coffee, and a round of golf for 25 notes. But I want to raise money for the captain's charity. So it's going to cost you an extra fiver on the day that's going to go into the charity box. It's being sponsored by Go 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 Sport. Uh, they're giving out the prizes. And then after the round, there will be an auction of sorts. There will be fines for things that you did wrong on the golf course just to raise money for the captain's charity at West Monmouthshire. Now it's going to be restricted to 30 people, 10 three balls. I like three balls because they go a hell of a lot quicker than four balls. So when it's fully announced, you will need to ring up West Monmouthshire Golf Club and book yourself in to one of those tea times. It doesn't matter if you're a one, a two or a three, or even if there's half a dozen of you. We'll get you teamed up with other people. And uh, we'll have a day out and support the captain's charity at West Monmouthshire. And there will be some decent prizes up for grabs, I can assure you of that. And there'll only be 30 of you, so you got a chance. But everyone's going to get a goodie bag anyway if Go 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 Sport come through for me. So um, watch this channel and I'll give you all the details probably somewhere around about the end of May, beginning of June. Cheers, ta -ra.